Hey everyone, Aria Labs here with a blog to watch. Please subscribe to our videos on YouTube and like this video if you find it useful. This is a review of the Tutima Saxon One Chronograph. This is part of Tutima's new design language and it also includes their uh, an in-house movement known as the Caliber 521. And you can see it through the, the back there, so it's a little bit of plastic. Um, the Caliber 521 um, it has some similarities of the Valjo 7750. I wouldn't call it a clone by any means, but it has some similarities. Um, one of the primary differences um, is how it attempts to emulate the, the famous Lamania Caliber 5100 um, by having a central minutes and central seconds chronograph. Um, so what they've done here, which is pretty handy, is make the chronograph hands here um, in red. Um, so you have central, uh, central minutes or central, central seconds, central minutes here. Uh, this would be hours. Um, this subdial up <clears throat> under 12 is a synchronized 24 hour hand. So it's essentially an AMP indicator. And then you have a, a running seconds here. If you look at the hands, this is kind of a, again, part of their new design language. I actually quite like these hands. I think they're elegant. I would call them thin arrow style hands. And the Saxon one case is kind of like an angular cushion um, and uh, there's a bracelet which is available as well. I'm not a huge fan of the bracelet, but you see here these notches. There's a, kind of a repeating T pattern that, that goes down the bottom, which ends up looking like the letter H, which is why I like it on the, uh, the alligator strap a little bit more. There's a lot of different versions, well not a lot, but there's a few different versions of the Saxo and Chronograph, um, not just in terms of the dial uh, color, but also the bezel. So if you look here, you have sort of a, a rotating timing bezel. Um, and here on this version, you have a more traditional uh, coined a edge, a pilot style uh, rotating bezel. So there's a lot of variety in there. I actually like this white dialed version a lot. I think it's quite handsome. The caliber 521 movement um, is four hertz and it operates at, uh, it has 44 hours of power reserve. Um, decently, decent, decent looking movement. Um, nice to see through there. And it's really good to have uh, an in-house movement from the brand that is a little bit more on the affordable side. So on the wrist, I think this watch takes a character um, unto itself, which it, it's, it's difficult to see when this watch is kind of just sitting around or in a case or in a picture or something like that, because it is a very avant-garde looking watch, but on the wrist, it takes a little bit of a new form and I think it's a lot more f flattering on the wrist. So if you're, if you're sort of weirded out or skeptical about the design of the Saxon one, I encourage you to try it on um, and see what you think. I've seen uh, this watch on some people that looks really cool um, and it sort of defines its own character because it's in a class of its own. It doesn't really look like anything else. And I think that's primarily what it is that Tutima wanted to do is have something that was sort of defined themselves. Um, weird issue here with the, with the strap um, you see here there's a clasp um, that opens and closes, allows you to size it. When you close it here, um, it can only open, well, it's supposed to open, I believe, with these little buttons here. Um, the problem is, is that this is, how you, this is also how you take the watch on and off because you have here um, a folding deployment, but a lot of times the strap is still too small, so you have to open it up here additionally, but then um, in addition to being a little bit sharp, that little pin can come out and you can accidentally unsize it. So it kind of defeats the purpose a little bit of having a deployant style uh, clasp there because it's uh, easy to open up there. And just a kind of a weird design thing. I've never quite seen that. Really not that big of a deal, but I, I figured that I should bring it up. Let's put the um, other one on the wrist. I'm not gonna sort of size it, but just so you can see what the color looks like. The gray one, um, it's hard to find a really nice gray looking watch, even though I think there should be a lot more of them. I like that there's a little bit of a contrast there between the polished hands and the hour markers and the very matte finish dial. I think it makes for a good look. It's quite flattering and it's a little bit more, um, I don't wanna say under the radar, but subtle. So you have a not subtle case with a subtle dial and the contrast is, is quite well done. Again, there's there's variety of versions of the Saxo one because that's essentially the, the, the case. Um, there's a three hand version with a day date, uh, but this version, which is the chronograph, is the one that has in-house movement. I really think that's the one that um, the most amount of people are gonna be interested in. Oh, I should also mention that this case um, is water resistant to 200 meters. So it's, it's definitely sporty, even though you can tell they're going for a little bit of, a, a, of an elegance to it. Uh, the Tutima, Saxon One Chronograph retails for $6,700, which is not an unfair price um, for a, a German-made watch with an in-house movement. And you can see the full review on a blog to watch. Thanks. <laughs>